But hey, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show here in this mothership, which is Studio 22, with, of course, the puppet master driving this ship, Mark Tate. What you doing, buddy? You doing all right? Hey, I'm doing great. <laughs> don't try to yeah. change it up now. It's, I'm doing fantastic. No, don't change it up now. You get two words. That's all. What are they? Um, Pretty good. Pretty is that, good. Is that that's right? exactly is that right. right. We're going to make a t-shirt from Mark Tate. Just says pretty good. And the, that's going to be your pretty good t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's pretty comfortable, pretty great price, so go buy it. <laughs> pretty good. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. We got in trouble recently. We did. There was some controversy. There was some controversy, but I love doing those off-the-rail shows because you are fantastic at pulling the wildest and weirdest stories from around the globe. Thank and you, you know what's funny? We make fun of everybody. We're an equal opportunity offender. We make fun of each other. I That's make fun true. of myself. We have a good time with it. But I'm telling you, if you do something stupid, I don't care what's wrong with you. I don't care if you're crippled, blind, dumb, or stupid, licking windows. We're going to make fun of you. We don't care, and we don't apologize either. But what we got in trouble for was not my fault, per se. It was Party Foul Steve's sitting over here in the peanut gallery. Party, Party Foul, do you want to repent publicly? Do yes, you apologize? I, do. I, I would like to apologize to everyone except for one <laughs> crucial part of it, and that is horses don't belong on planes <laughs> with people. Has anybody stopped to think about how the horse feels about this? So what we're referring to, of course, and, and again, as, as a funny thing— Candace, who comes up with the titles for the podcast, she referred to it, or the description, she referred to it as a as a comfort pony. I thought Steve was taking the rap for this one. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to put blame everywhere. Okay. So it was this woman's service animal, a mini pony, which or mini horse, which, of course, is, is approved as a service animal by the people that approve service animals. And we made fun of that a little bit. And this lady sent me, I mean, I got, my, dude, I got so many messages from people saying we were making fun of disabled people. We weren't, that we were we were making fun of these horses. They said some people need these horses because they're bigger than dogs. And then the next person would say, well, they're the same size as a dog. It can fit in the same place a dog can, which if you've got a horse underneath the seat in front of you, that's a seriously Guinness World Record horse right there. That's a tiny ass horse. And so... It's just funny, man. We're going to make fun of you. So Somebody told me to piss off because we're making fun of people. They didn't care about the blind kid that ate potatoes for three years no. and, and lost his sight from a vitamin deficiency. Where's Kathleen, the outrage on that? Kathleen, stop following you on YouTube. Oh, well. <laughs> 190,999. <laughs> we to- have a good time on here. It's party time, Mom. Stay horned. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen. We got to pay the bill. So don't get off of here. You ever notice how people get off whenever it's time to read an ad? Stop it. It's like changing you the channels. You can't hang on for 30 seconds. What is wrong with you people? We're here for you. Sweating it out. Studio 22, giving you the hard-hitting facts. You're not going to get it from Graham Allen. You're only going to get it from the Chad Brather Show. By the way, go to YouTube and subscribe and get it where podcasts are offered. Hey, about this time every year, our attention turns to that solemn anniversary, which is 9-11. It's the moment when we reflect on those who gave their lives that day. And those who would pay the ultimate sacrifice in the years to come defending our liberties in places like Afghanistan to Iraq. Now, something big has happened. 18 years later, we find ourselves seemingly in a state of permanent war. We're warned that the Islamic State is poised to make a comeback. We watch as the crescent of Iranian influence extends its long shadow. In Afghanistan, our leaders are negotiating the terms of, quote, peace with the Taliban. I want to tell you about a recent film that we talked about here with a very special guest on this show and this film ties this all together. It's called Mosul. And in the story, it's the story of the last battle of the Iraq War documenting the 2016-2017 fight against ISIS in Iraq's second largest city. Directed by former CIA officer and a former guest of this show, Daniel Gabriel, Mosul is much more than a war story. You don't want to miss this thing. It is a journey that will take you up the Tigris River into the heart of darkness of the ISIS caliphate, revealing an apocalyptic battle against two unyielding enemies, violent Islamic extremism, and the sectarian mistrust and hatred that will remain long after the politicians declare victory. You can get on iTunes, get on Amazon, and Vimeo. Vimeo visit www.mosul-film.com. Mosul. That's M-O-S-U-L-film.com. Speaking of somebody who was recently at Ground Zero... <laughs> And who is a human walking ground zero. <laughs> Nine line of barrels, vice president of BS and 
business development. I don't know what I do. Over there. I don't know what you do either. <laughs> you got the most laid back job. Nine Line Apparel's Matt Light, our very good friend. Good to see you, buddy. Glad to have you here in Studio Twenty Two. <laughs> it's good to be in Texas, brother. man. It, well, you know there was a hurricane. It, it yeah, so I've, I've evacuated, left the family behind. Yeah, you know, you're a terrorist. You're a domestic terrorist. You ever see my driver's license? No. I look, I look like I need to be on a no-fly list on my driver's license. You do? You yeah, should? It's, That's it's why awful. you're always driving where you go. Everywhere I go, I drive. And I'm everybody... always – it's funny because you'll get in a car, yeah. your Cadillac Escalade. I ain't got Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> I got Paul Thick Pen Chevrolet. Paul Thick Pen Chevrolet. I got one of those too. Yeah, that's right, bro. <laughs> you know that story, right? They called me up. Paul calls me up and he says, "Hey, man, I got a deal for you." And I said, "I don't need a deal." And he goes, "No, I got a deal for you." <laughs> he can smell new money. Hey, new money, you a sucker. Paul Thick Pen can smell new money. So he calls me on the phone. He says, "I got a Corvette for you." I said, "Man, I don't want a Corvette." <laughs> he said, "Oh, you want this one?" I don't want a Corvette, Paul. Two days later. I bought it on the back of a tour bus over the phone <laughs> with Alan Ambrose on the phone. Call two days later, that Corvette sitting in my front yard. How much? How how often you drive it? I drive it all the time. It's parked in front of Steve's house right now. Party fouls. My neighbors, they're they they walk by. They think it's mine. <laughs> Steve's got no, so look no, now no. my truck. So the other day, Steve calls me up because because we did a little drinking over Steve's house the other day, and so my wife picked me up and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I left my truck over, over there. I thought you were there for Bible study. Kind of. Hey, Steve ain't cracked the Bible. <laughs> Steve's mama preaches to him on the phone. You most Christians in. <laughs> ain't cracked the Bible. I've been trying to, trying to find that Greek word for dust collector. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we come on. Uh, uh, so I, I left my truck over there. And Steve, it, it was, we went through Labor Day and stuff, and so when you got a personal driver, he needs to be able. Well, to Well, he's have. got my Mercedes over there. He's been keeping that like it's his. God, you got look at you. How's I got cars. One, I got how's a fleet. That, how's that one percent lifestyle? I get you? fleet insurance at this Good point. Lord, is the Blaze hiring? <laughs> <laughs> he still half my jugs anyway. I, I do. Can, I can have That's my exactly shot. right, boy. They never fail either. <laughs> they never fail except that one that I do about the. Uh, toys for Tards. You can't, we can't talk about that. We can talk about Toys for Tards. No, that's that was an awful joke. We I can get never, back in trouble again. I should have never wrote that joke. It's pretty good, though. I wrote some good ones, and that was a bad one. And, you have uh, written some good ones. That was a bad one, and I uh, should have never written it. That was awful, but it was very unchristian. Uh, but the other ones are pretty good. They are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Either yeah. way, we're making fun of somebody. Yeah. But I had the truck. I left it over there. And Steve, it was Labor Day, and he texted me that night. He says, hey, man, I need you to come move that truck. And I was like, why? And he goes, well, the mailman won't deliver my mail. If it's in front of the mailbox, I'm like, what the hell are you waiting on? <laughs> Steve, I mean, Steve lives on vacation. What are you doing? Who's writing you a letter? IRS? <laughs> I got junk mail to collect. Yeah, oh Steve's got to go through He's the northern tool and equipment. He's got to you know, get his coupons. Get his coupons. <laughs> waiting on go Kohl's 20%. I'm waiting on Party Foundation merch. I hear you. Uh, go down we'll have eight, it. Go down to the H-E-B. It's on sale, actually. You can go to partyfoundation.com and get some Party Found merch. Oh, oh look at you fight. wearing one of them. We got to get some more of those shirts right there. PFAF. My mom still can't figure out what AF means. Pray for means. all friends. You just, all friends. Party foul all friends. My mama called me the other day. Mm-hmm. And my mama's blind, so she don't hear too good. <laughs> and um, so we, she called me up, and we got her a fire stick. All right? My daddy ain't never been on the internet. So we get him a fire stick. I said, hey, we need to get this thing hooked up and whatnot. And I said, mama, what's your Amazon email? She said, I don't know what that is. So I gave him my account, and I told him, I said, if y'all go order any movies or anything, just let me know. I said, I don't mind paying for them, but don't be ordering like 100 movies, mm-hmm. you know, watching all the all the big hits. She calls me the other day. She goes, Matthew. She said there was a, a charge on her bill from July 27th for twelve ninety nine from DirecTV. I said, Mama, that was before we got that fire stick. I said, everything okay? She goes, yeah. She said, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. She goes, I called them. I said, what did they charge you for? She goes, and she whispered it. It was a dirty movie. <laughs> and I said, well, you ain't got to whisper it. I said, we on the phone. I said, what kind of dirty movie you and Daddy watch? We ain't watching no dirty movies, Matthew. <laughs> and I'm in a truck full of people, you know, so I just start agging it on and whatnot. And my mama got to crying about it. And uh, she was she's so embarrassed that 
uh, these people, and she got mad at my daddy thinking he done order them. He oh, looked at goes, sweetheart, he said, I'm 66 years old. He said, it's going to take a dirty move and a few other substances before I can enjoy it. He needs to go to GetRoman.com. Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> GetRoman.com, people. Listen, man. Did you hear the story about the guy who had direct TV and a, a 70, 70, he got charged $70 because a dog stepped on the remote control and got him the Hustler channel? Really? Yeah. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. <laughs> you blame good... everything on the you dog. Know, That's a true whole story. Miniature horse thing. Y'all, what y'all ain't? You know, the concern I have is how do y'all expect Graham Allen to get around <laughs> if he ain't got his horse? <laughs> <laughs> Graham can ride around on a big dog. <laughs> I love him. I saw him a little bit ago. He jumped out of his truck. Yeah. I, was like, I ain't literally never, jumped out. I ain't never seen somebody jump out of an S10. <laughs> I was like, one of them Chevy Colorados. Yeah. Like, man, Graham Allen jumping. don't even fly, does he? No. Uh-uh. He, he don't like to fly. He don't like it. No, he Graham's don't. scared of heights. The good thing is, though, <laughs> if you fly with Graham. Obviously. You, the good thing is, if you fly with Graham, you just put him in your lap, and it's a free ticket. <laughs> you ain't got to buy two seats. <laughs> oh, I love it. So when Graham started this, me and you was on his first couple of episodes. Yeah. And then he uh, got big. Mine went viral. Yeah. Yeah. It went talking uh, about beating kids. I did. I told him you gotta whip them kids. You gotta <laughs> oh beat that ass, son. Huh? Boy, I got a lot of flack on that. Did you? I, for a nobody. I got a lot of flack on I that. I wrote a song called Beat That Ass, and people love it. Every really? time I do it on stage. R. Kelly did too. Yeah. Well <laughs> his was, no, that was a lifestyle. That it was, was a lifestyle. <laughs> It, it was a lifestyle brand he created, yeah, yeah. and it was produced by Jeff Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, we got a hard-hitting expose coming out on Jeff Epstein. Really? Hard-hitting. Yeah. There's things about Jeff Epstein nobody wants to know about, but we're talking about it. I tell you what, with them Clintons, man. Clintons will kill you. Tig and Oz, they, they, they skirted by. They got by. <laughs> they got, they got, <laughs> boys that came home from Benghazi. Yeah, they skirted by. She they wasn't know. expecting that. But. You know, we had Tig on the show. He was promoting a deal he had going on. I can't believe how many people come out and say, man, this guy's a fake. He's a fraud. None of that ever happened. Let him say it to his face. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's one person in this world. <laughs> I'll tell you, I fight a lot of men, and I'm okay getting beat yeah. up. Tig, Tig's one of them guys. Tig had Mm-mm. shoulder surgery and still got m- bulkier. Yeah. <laughs> he still grew yeah. muscles. I'm like, he's like, I can't use my right shoulder. And I'm like, well, you're doing something sh- with it. He won his shooting match that he just had right yeah. after that surgery. The tactical games. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't either. And Oz, he ain't even got a hand. Yeah. He's <laughs> he like, can't feel his fingers because he, he got he his arm you know, blown he's off. He hold stuff like this. But and he can I still would, shoot lights out. I, I would, yeah, oh, I know. I wouldn't fight either one of them men. That's like Evan Hafer. At uh, uh, Black Rifle Coffee, he's five foot nothing, and I wouldn't fight him with ten men. No, I tell you what though, that Matt Bass is a pretty man, ain't he? He's handsome. <laughs> That's a good looking man. He's handsome. Right like I hate him. Yeah. I texted him the other day and I said, "Man, congratulations on the success with the book and everything you do." And that's badass because he came out. He was number one on the audio books, which. Is because you dumbasses can't read them. exactly <laughs> all those people that exactly. follow Matt Best they can't read books yeah. but they can listen to they can listen to it and but his book was still on like number fourteen yeah. on the bestseller list and it's gone Killing higher it. since then. Killing it, I think. I mean, he's and I hate like, his guts. I do. I love him, but I hate his guts. And like we took a picture, talented, pretty. I mean, everything. We went down to and reasonably in good shape, and he's got a pretty wife. Yeah, I mean that's the only reason I follow him online is just every now and then I can get a glance at Noel, <laughs> <laughs> and she ain't ashamed of nothing. <laughs> I tell you what, the Matt, Matt, he's a the thing is is he's he's a good guy too. He is you know what I'm guy. saying? Like yeah. being around him and stuff, he's a good guy, and uh, I'm I'm happy for him to be able to. I am too, and y'all need to uh, get his book. Uh, yeah. Thank you for my service. Get yeah. his book. It, it is funny, and it's a great book. And I, I think about on, writing one, too, with yeah. all the stuff I did in the military. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's this time I was in Kentucky changing the transmission on a Jeep, and thing fell out and almost took my toe off. <laughs> when you're a heavy wheel mechanic in an aviation unit like I was, you see things. You know, yeah, Things that'll change you, man. Yeah. Like uh, Facebook jail. It'll sh- change you, man. But, I mean, I was... I was in the military before social media, thank yeah. God, you know. And uh, yeah, you'd have been out. You'd have been like Eddie Gallagher. Oh yeah, I mean it was. Uh, social media back then would have been bad. Yeah, we were, <laughs> there would have been bad. evidence. No, we, 
We, you know, we didn't, you know, I was in a unit. We didn't do nothing. I tell people all the time, I took six strokes off my golf game. When I was in the, <laughs> when I was in the Army, I didn't do a thing. Uh, people tell me, thank you for your service and all that stuff. I said, thank you for your tax dollars. You know, <laughs> they paid for my education. I didn't do anything in the military. I'm the last person to be thanked. You never see Matt Lada wearing one of them Korean War veterans. No, no. Hats yeah. in the, I in tell the, everybody the time. I said, in if, the lubies. I said, if anybody ever says, that Matt, that Matt Lada has stolen Valor. He, he, he stolen Valor. Boy, you got you a you got somebody on heroin or something in front of you because I I am now yeah, I didn't do nothing in the military but you know, guys like Matt and him they did they know, did stuff he's, he's a, a ranger I mean, he's special a ranger operator and became yeah. like see I'm not sitting there going who's got time for that know. you know like you know I got to sleep at least ten twelve hours a day <laughs> yeah. and you know I eat four times five times a day I know you do and I'm sitting there thinking who in the world has time to work out like he does go be a CIA operator save the world write a book. Start a coffee company, start a t-shirt. I mean, people like that. Yeah, I'm. Well, Matt's can't stand funny because we were. I'm a name drop. We were down at Granger Smith's ranch, and we were working on that new music video that Granger yeah, did. Yeah. And so we were going. We were just hanging out, talking to me. Yeah, Matt it looked said, like you had a good time. I appreciate. Oh, we had a blast. I appreciate the invite. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, that day cost me six thousand three hundred dollars. That's a dropping bucket. Well. I mean, was, I blew, that gas? I, I, it was that gas in your helicopter? I blew it out my nose, you know. <laughs> blew it out my nose, but it cost me, and I like to bring it up because Party Foul Steve broke the Jeep, and that's what it cost down there. We to broke it together. Burn up the, no, you no, paid no for you it. were driving it when it broke. Uh, <laughs> Shoot, we were Jeffrey Earnhardt one time. He tore up a transmission in a Porsche. Mm hmm. That well, was Jeffrey Earnhardt can do that. Yeah, he can do that. Easy. You got a last name like that, you can do whatever yeah. you want. So we uh, we were down there, and this, this Matt said, well, let's take a picture together. I said, all right, man, give me five minutes. I'll get over there to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked over. He put his arm around me, and I just kept my arms by my side. He said, are we not friends? I said, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't that, know. That's like. He intimidates me, though. He, he's well, pretty. God, he's so good looking. Pretty. Yeah, it don't make any sense to me. People like that, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like them. It ain't fair. I don't like them. It ain't fair. God made us, though. So. Yeah. But you know that dude that his dog stepped on the remote control and he got the Hustler channel? He took that thing all the way up and appealed it to the FCC. Really? I think I'd have paid the $70 and swallowed that. You know, I told my mama, Literally. I said, Mama, you must not have a lot going on in your life because <laughs> if I have an extra $12 on my Comcast bill, it ain't worth me calling. <laughs> so, I ain't got a lot of money, but I tell you what, I got 12 extra dollars. <laughs> yeah. and you, well, I mean, I ain't got the time to talk no, to somebody in the Philippines no, about twelve ninety nine. Not. Yeah, I went to the Comcast building up in Philadelphia. <laughs> Ain't a lick of customer service there. I was like, where in the world's bill at? Man, you know, I told you, I, I had this uh, AT&T thing. They couldn't get my stuff straightened out. The billing kept going all wrong, so I kept calling. And this guy said, hello, my name is Andrew. <laughs> and I didn't get anywhere with him. Called back, hello, my name is Matthew. I couldn't get anywhere with him. Hello, my name is James. And I was so tired of talking to Jesus' disciples. <laughs> that finally, I called back. <laughs> and she said, Hey, baby, this is Tanisha. What you need? <laughs> I was like, I'm ready to kiss you on the mouth, girl. <laughs> She's like, honey, talk. you ain't paid your bill. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, anyway, as a mediocre comedian like yourself, mm. um, you got a new tour coming up. I do have a new tour coming up. I feel up. like this is my podcast right now. You can interview me. Uh, um, when does that start? Mm. I'm glad you asked, Matt Lida. September 24th, Des Moines, Iowa. Are you coming to a city near Savannah, Georgia? We're working on it. I I'm not. telling you, the devil is don't fighting us. Don't come down. Well, Charlie Daniels already beat the devil down there. You're good. That's yeah. why we need to come to Georgia. Yeah. Johnny ran him out. Johnny. I, this, I ain't never in my life tried to do something that is potentially so much fun and to have so many people fight against it. First of all, we were going to call it MAGA Country. I know. Y'all changed the name. <laughs> you on had it. To we had it. that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook, we couldn't promote Facebook ain't going to let you couldn't promote it. Facebook, I had to get second-person authentication. They had, Facebook had to mail me a freaking letter. And then and then we changed it to uh, Hollywood got involved, L.A. got involved, and they, want, they wanted the most benign thing. Yeah. So they changed it to Freedom to Laugh. And our buddies, Mike Loftus and Brian Hayner, Reno Collier, myself, were doing this tour. And so we, we said, let's just come up with an outlandish name. So we started calling ourselves the Eagles of Liberty. <laughs> Jesse Waters goes, man, that sounds like a biker gang. We're like, yeah, baby. He was like, that shit ain't gonna sell, bro. Biker gang in a subdivision, (laughs) wearing a watch, bunch of fifty-year-old subdivision guys. 
Honda's. <laughs> on Honda's. We go, we go, <laughs> with an Apple you know, Watch. You, know, you got gold wings. You know, you got the big old motorcycles that drive themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Trikes. <laughs> Mickey Mouse on a tricycle, baby. You go do your bike rallies yeah. at the Applebee's. Yeah. Don't demean my hardness. Listen, my wife already does that. Anyway, <laughs> so we're doing this thing. And, and just the other day, my manager, Arthur, out in L.A., he calls me up. He's so mad. He's like, I told you guys to call it this tour and, and give it this tagline. And I'm like, Arthur, you got to chill out, man. No, this has got to be the deal. And I'm like, oh, man, we're just trying to go out and have some fun. This, that money gets involved. People get crazy. Oh, money. Yeah, money does. I, that's why I try to stay away from it. So I still do the one-man show, Star Spangled Banter. I will continue doing that to the end of this year, and then I'll be doing one-man shows on out. How many new cities are you going to be going to for that one because you keep doing the same set? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just concerned that if you start going to the same cities, people. Oh, we've done gone international now. Yeah. Like, like I went to New Mexico. New Mexico is not international. <laughs> you you want to bet? <laughs> you want to bet? What y'all do? Go down to San Antonio to show? <laughs> oh, we're going back. We're going back. Why do you think I got to diversify and bring other comics on the show? <laughs> it's the truth, Matt. Golly, my manager said, "You think you can do 25 minutes of political comedy?" I said. Well, let's talk about the water park. <laughs> <laughs> That's 15 minutes right there. <laughs> exactly. I'll knock it down. Yeah. Now, we, uh, we're going to do this thing. We, we're going to, uh, which, you know, Reno Collier, he was Blue Collar Comedy Tour's second generation. He used to open for Larry the Cable Guy oh, really? forever. Michael Loftus, who he's consistently on Fox News, and great comedian. He, he was a, he's not only a great comedian, but he was a television writer for, you know, Charlie Sheen's shows and Kevin oh, wow. James' shows yeah. and stuff. And then uh, Brian Hayner, who is his son, uh, Sinister Gates, is the lead guitarist for Avenged Sevenfold. He's ranked by Guitar Magazine as the 86th greatest guitar player of all time. His son is. And so Hayner is an incredible master of guitar as well. And uh, he was the guitar guy that toured with Jeff Dunham and was on all of Jeff oh, wow. Dunham's special. So he would, he would play the guitar while the puppets would sing. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but y'all need to Google all those guys. Get on. I, I watch Brian Hayner's music videos nonstop. They're hilarious. You know, the thing He's got a song called Never Use the N Word Unless You're Black. <laughs> it's fantastic. That is, man. Yeah, it's a song that I've yeah. missed. Um, you had a guy on here. I don't know who his, what his name was. He was. Uh, on where? You were talking uh, comedy the other day. Uh huh. Weird looking dude on here. What was his name? Oh, uh, Kilstein. Jamie Kilstein. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know who it was. So yeah. he must not. I mean, he must not be from the 90s. <laughs> he, you I know, only Kilstein's a pretty big deal. I, I didn't, I didn't know really either how 90s. big he was. But yeah. like, he was a protege of Robin Williams, and George Carlin's daughter gave him like one of his first. I remember you saying TV something on the show. Yeah. Like that. Um, comedy's changing, man. Comedy's almost obsolete. Yeah. Dave Chappelle's thing. I yeah, mean, Dave which I think is a phenomenal. I mean, you see, I laugh. I laugh at the stuff when people make fun of Trump. I laugh at it. Me too. I, it's comedy. It's it's not yeah. meant to um, be hurtful or hateful or anything like that. In my opinion, it's meant to be poking and and take yourself uh, kind of uh, away from reality for a little while and just laugh at and laugh at what's going on in the world. And um, you know, Dave Chappelle makes fun of everybody, mm -hmm. which is I think is awesome. And he's a a master at what he does. And, um, but now, like, you think about it, the kings of comedy couldn't be on, could, couldn't do it now. Those right. guys couldn't. Bernie Mac wouldn't be Bernie Mac today. Um, I, I don't know how Eddie Murphy's going to do uh, when I, he comes I think, back. Uh, you know, and, some, who was it that said, uh, the Kilstein that said, unless Eddie Murphy walks out holding his boyfriend's hand on stage, yeah, he's <laughs> there's not, no way. He, he, yeah. And he's going to have thing. to be woker than woke. Oh, absolutely. And even you know the the blue collar guys, their stuff was a little yeah, a little different. You know, if you really if go it, back and listen to Dan Whitney, Larry the Cable Guy, yeah, if you listen to his stuff. You know, people th always thought of that as being clean comedy. But you no. really listen to what he's talking about. Talking about like we got in trouble too for fat shaming. By the way, I don't remember what we were talking about on that one, Candice. Yeah. Which topic? You can't. You can't. But like, oh, I think we were talking about the Sports Illustrated cover model. Yes, I do yeah. remember that now. Yeah, where I said you couldn't even see her. I don't know why she was putting on a swimsuit because you couldn't see her uh, bikini bottoms because they were all covered up by her. her. <laughs> and so I well, said, "Well, you see, I can't and, say stuff like and that." And I was talking cause, about that. Well, why can't? Because I'm fat. I'm so, fat too. Yeah. And so I. Uh, you shouldn't talk about. It like but that. we were talking about her doctor. Don't think that's beautiful. 
you know, because she's got type two. Yeah. And and so that's you know, what are we talking about? Oh but, yeah. So we got in trouble for fat shaming. But yeah. if you go back and listen to Larry the Cable Guy, he talks about man, you know, my sister's so big, we got a oh, she got yeah. a belly ring. And he said, but we call that a hitch. He said, which is convenient because we've got something to hook onto to pull her away from the buffet. Yeah. So you know that stuff would get you in trouble. It gets you in trouble now. And that's the thing is, but that's why I preempt all that stuff yeah. by saying I ain't apologizing. I'm gonna say what I want to say. I'm going to make fun of everybody. Yeah, you definitely I don't do. care if you're fat, skinny, gay, straight, black, white, male, female. I'm going to make fun of everybody. Yeah. I don't care if you're L, G, B, T, Q, R, Z. I don't care. Plus, what? Yeah. yeah. It's party foul Steve. Absolutely. He's got the letters on. He's a PFAF. Yeah. But I think, you I get mean, that shirt at partyfoundation.com. That's the thing. Is <laughs> I, I, comment, comedy is just, and I love comedy. You know that. Mm-hmm. Um, you use half my jokes. Um, so <laughs> Three quarter. <laughs> you know, party foul. He stole my joke about the chicken salad sandwich thing. Yeah, and it goes over great. But here's so. the thing: is that's a true story. But I, but I switched it. He told it pimento cheese. I tell it chicken yeah, salad. So, okay, I the, call it the loser special. The, <laughs> it's fresh. <laughs> it, well, it's it was, fresh. It was written by a loser. <laughs> 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 Changed by a loser. <laughs> delivered by a loser. The rid the rid the origins of that was my sister's roommate. My sister moved out of um, our little trailer. Uh, when she graduated high school, like we all had to, and uh, moved into a, a house with a, a friend, and her friend was making ham sandwiches for a chicken fight. In real, I mean, it's real life. You know, times are tough in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So she's making ham sandwiches and got busted. The chicken fight got you know busted, and she got a fine for selling ham sandwiches without a food permit. And I thought that was hilarious. My sister telling me it this, is and I was like, this is this is comedy gold. <laughs> I changed it to my sister got arrested for selling pimento cheese sandwiches at the chicken fight. You changed it to chicken, chicken salad. salad. Yeah. But what's amazing to me is I told you that at a poker table about 4 a.m. in Las Vegas when you've had about 23 Jamesons. I was you hammered, remember, dude. You remember it. <laughs> Trust me. I know gold when I hear it, bro. Re- you remember it. <laughs> and I've used it from coast to coast. <laughs> How in the world did you remember I do the, it? I do a whole thing about being from the state of Georgia and growing up in Georgia, and, what, and that thing fits in there perfectly. Georgia so, strip clubs. That's what I, you know, I used to talk about so, my sister being a stripper. Yeah. And we would, I got kicked out of the strip club for uh, apparently it's socially unacceptable to throw change at the strippers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was walking out of the place, and I looked back, and when I saw my sister picking all that change up, I couldn't help but laugh, but I felt bad for her being pregnant and all. Um, but it was all right because Daddy was there to help her. But Daddy ain't no, you know, Daddy ain't he he ain't no pervert or nothing. It's just in the state of Georgia, um, you can't get your driver's license till you're 16. So he was there to drive her home, and um, so uh, you know. But I I used to go to a strip club in Georgia back before I found Jesus, and we used to throw change at the strippers, and it was awful. You shouldn't do that. No. It's, well, you know, dem- it's I do the, demeaning. I do the bit, which depends on how I get into it. Some people get offended by it and some people love it. But I talk about don't ever go to a strip club in Alabama. And it's the same deal. We talk about yeah. girls got, you, you know, you ever seen a stripper with plantar fasciitis and oh, they yeah. got bruises on her where people have been hitting her with quarters all night long. But <clears throat> I was getting my boots shined in the airport one time and this guy got to telling me a story about a strip club. And he, he said, man, this girl turned around. She had an icy hot patch on her back. <laughs> Oh, that was the funniest thing. So that's where I pick up stuff. People just say stuff in oh, conversation, yeah. and it hits me. And uh, we, I did a show a couple weeks ago in Calgary, up in Canada, and you know they they don't have dollar bills. They got loonies, and then they they used to have two dollar bills, and they now a coin called toonies. So they got loonies and toonies. You got coins, and so Allison Stone Cipher, my assistant and best friend, she she uh, went up there with us. She's from Calgary, and I said. Do people really go to strip clubs up here and they throw loonies and toonies at people? And she said, yeah, they throw the coins. I said, now how do these girls gather all those things up? I mean, what if you start bouncing these coins off of people? <laughs> so we just had a blast in the club that night, not the strip club, in the comedy club, talking about these loony, loonies and toonies yeah. and how they do this, just the technical aspects of bouncing change off of people. Like I expect somebody, you hand somebody a, what do you hand them, a five in Canadian money with the queen on it, and they turn around with one of them sonic change makers and just <laughs> Hand you back some loonies and toonies. I mean, how do you get changed from a stripper in Canada? I, you know, it, I don't, I don't know. But um, are you a Christian the, in Canada? The health care is great. 
<laughs> you would think they're planter smash. I told them, I said, yeah. man, I said, like, I could live up here. You know, just minor differences between here and America. Thing, you know, little things like yeah. free speech and gun rights and yeah. health care. Yeah. yeah. Like, but other than that. You know, I, I've got a, a business idea where I was going to open up a strip club in Idaho called Taters and Titties. <laughs> And it was just going to be a strip club that had a buffet of just different types of potatoes. You know, um, you go blind from that, <laughs> by the way. So there's a story about this kid who in, in Britain, he went blind because all he ate for three years was Pringles, French fries, sausages, and white bread. That's all he ate. His mama worked at the pub, and he was getting calories. He wasn't getting nutrients. And so all he ate was potatoes for three years, and he went blind. Am I telling the truth, Candice? It's true story. Absolutely true. true story. So not only can you go in there and see things <laughs> that your perverted mind will take you home and you make yourself blind from doing, yeah. but you can them eat them potatoes, they'll make you blind too. <laughs> you get it going and coming. I just think, you know, a loaded baked potatoes, mm-hmm. some mashed potatoes, some tater tots, mm-hmm. tater skins. We're going to have it all. Yeah. We're going to have it all. And uh, Idaho's a beautiful country. You know, it's this beautiful. It is a beautiful country. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah, I, I, I just think it's a good business idea. I don't know. I'm going to invest. I'm taters. Gonna... taters and titties. There's this place. Y'all can get offended. Y'all watching this show. I don't care. Anything it, I say. It, anything you it say. It does not a representation of Nine Line Apparel. <laughs> no, he does not speak on behalf of NineLineApparel.com. Get on there and get you Use unapologetic Chad 20 patriot. Use Chad twenty for twenty percent. Yeah. Use Chad twenty. For 20% off at NineLineApparel.com. Uh, tell Tyler Merritt I sent you. Boy, that Angie, oh, she's something special. She's a sweetheart. Angie Merritt. I'm not talking about her. She's a heart. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Uh, Tyler drive over and kill you. I know he will. He won't drive over and fly Chopper over here. <laughs> Land it right out here at Mercury One Studios and shoot me dead. Last time You think you're... they still love each other? Have I got a shot? <laughs> um, I don't think Tyler's gay. I don't think he – no, well, <laughs> I think I can turn a man. <laughs> if there was anybody, um, <laughs> it would be you. Last time you were in Savannah, we had a pretty good time. Oh, we had a good time. Yeah, that was um, – Lord, there's stories I can't tell. I know. I had to send you an email to let you know what all you did. Yeah. <laughs> Just – I love old you. Dustin Rhodes, though. Dustin Runnels. Oh, he is. Uh, He's a nice. One. You know, he just got a, he just signed a contract with AEW. Good for him. And uh, do you see where uh, Jericho, Chris Jericho, just won the AEW I, I title? Want, I, I have not. I have not watched wrestling until the last. Like, you know, and I call wrestling. it wrestling. Yeah, because that's what it is. It's wrestling. Um, you know, people say it's fake, but I'll tell you what's not fake. When Ric Flair beat Wahoo McDaniel Ooh. for that World Heavyweight Championship, the tears rolling out of my face weren't fake. No. <laughs> Those emotions weren't fake, but let's let's get feel, off religion. I, I feel, um, so I feel, du- I feel du- that Dustin's, there was a moment. There was a moment we shared, Candice. Make sure you hype that up in the uh, in the promo in your country. It would be the luchadors, <laughs> luchadors. Uh, the the, the yeah, lucha oh, libres or something like oh. that. Um, Dustin's a good guy. He's great, dude. and um, he's a nice little baby. He not does the road, do <laughs> He thought so. He thought and, know, and his brother started this AEW thing. Cody. American Dream. And <laughs> Cody Roll, he a next big thing. <laughs> oh man, Dustin's got some stories about his daddy. And we told him on and here. They're so funny. <laughs> they're so funny. <laughs> and it's just, you know, and Dustin loves wrestling. Yeah. Like it is his That's his whole life. Yeah. That's he all he's l- ever known. He loves it. Like he loves the K part of it. He loves it. I mean, it's just amazing. And uh, he is just a, he's such a good guy, man. He really is. Yeah, he's, a, he's a sweetheart of a dude. We love him. I wear his, I wear his natural shirt on here a lot. Yeah. So I always text him. I'm like, man, I'm representing today. Cause I'm scared of those dudes. I want them on my team. Absolutely. Know? Cause they're bad. Well, you know, the undertaker was over there, Mark Calloway. Yeah. And he, um, he texted me yesterday, asked me if we were all right with the hurricane. Good guy like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Also, I think he could kill me just he real quick. You. He People have heard this story a million times when we were in Vegas together and, and we were all sitting around smoking cigars and we were drinking. You don't drink. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm a Christian. Because you believe Jesus. Yeah. Jesus drank. But whatever. And uh, you just, we just don't want you. New wine. There's two people. There's two people I don't want to engage or imbibe with alcohol as you and Donald Trump. <laughs> I don't want neither hey, one of you. The Don doesn't drink. Don doesn't so. drink. Thank God, Donald Trump. Can you imagine him three o'clock in the morning hammered on yeah. Twitter? 
sitting on a toilet, Uh-oh. spray painted orange, got his speedo me and, him might be, and his, me and him might be best friends. Though, yeah. If we, but no, um, yeah, yeah, we were in Vegas. And I looked at, I, looked, I said, take her. I'm going to punch you right in the face. Oh, this was hilarious. He said, I better not find out about it. I yeah, know. <laughs> you know, he tells some funny stories too. Oh, gosh. I mean, get him going. He's a quiet dude, but once he you really get him is. going. He really is. He's a quiet guy. Uh, but but he, And he likes – what you find out a lot is with athletes and these celebrities, they don't um, they don't like talking about, you know, their their playing days or any right, of that. Right. You know, they don't like – this is not their thing. It's their job. It's like Matt Best. You ask him, you know, how many people you kill. He won't tell He won't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't understand it. Um, I don't. Party foul Steve would never shut up about that. Oh, dude. Let me tell you something. In my, I, I have killed so many people in my head. I'll tell you all kinds of cool stories about it. Um, but um, his his stories are absolutely hilarious because he's been, you know, him and Dustin both been in the industry for so long. Yeah, and, and I mean, Undertaker's what, hundred and, and everybody's hundred eight, <laughs> and everybody's opinion probably top three to five sure, of, of course. all time. Yeah. Um, but he came to Shot Show. Five thousand people are. You know, want pictures with the man. I took five thousand pictures if I took mm-hmm. one. And two times he looked at me and he said, "Get my picture, get my picture." And it was both with Tig and Oz. Mm-hmm. And he was so humble and so appreciative of those guys and his love for the military, his love for this country, his love for just you know guys that or and gals that are willing to to put their lives on the line. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty neat to yeah. to to have those conversations with him. Yeah. And you know, it's and his support for Nine Line and Nine Line Foundation and everything that I've seen personally and firsthand and stuff that people in public don't know, it's 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 pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And him and Dustin both and Diamond Dallas Page, all those wrestlers love it, man. They love America. They love yeah. they love conservatism. Have you seen that new movie, uh Peanut Butter Falcon? <laughs> Um, you need to check it out. It's got a oh um, Chad. I don't. I don't, Jake, I don't look at those you're, movies. You're a Christian. Well, your mama's renting them. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for her to be blind, it must just be good. She sounds. must. She, she must be watching that channel in Braille or something. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, oh uh, Jake the Snake Diamond Dallas made me think. <laughs> she must eat a lot of potatoes, bro. The. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, uh, you know, he did that uh, the Resurre- second coming, the, the, the resurrection, resurrection of Jake, Jake the Snake. Snake. Yeah. Anyway, Jake the Snake makes a, a little appearance in that movie. It's pretty cool. And it's called what? Peanut Butter Peanut Falcon. Peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, reasonably decent movie. Anyway, kinda Chris like Jericho. Kind of kinda, kinda like your stand up. Pretty much. <laughs> reasonably decent, but it pays well. Chris Jericho won the AEW title. He did. The other night. 93 years old. And then. He had the belt stolen out of his car while he was eating dinner in a Longhorn Steakhouse. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's the most wrestling story I've ever heard. I ain't never in my life. You know, I had a, somebody busted the window and stole his AEW championship. I belt. had a set of jet skis stolen off my Trans Am one time. <laughs> and what didn't make any sense was the T tops of that Trans Am. And I had every Marshall Tucker tape sitting out there on the front yeah. seat. You'd have thought they'd have taken that. You would have thought so. I knew this old boy. God bless him. He's my dad's former business partner. He's dead now. Somebody broke in his Cadillac one night and uh, dumped all the tapes out and just stole the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you got really bad taste in music. In, somebody broke into R. Kelly's uh, van. <laughs> Got their kid back. <laughs> Liam Nelson was out. I heard it smell like piss. <laughs> that man, that man needs to be taken out by a shot. Shot dead, <laughs> like just, just put shot. down. Like kill the man. Oh my! God. Just kill him. God. He is. How many times do you? I don't know. Man. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. He jumped up, cried. Had his meltdown. God, they should, have, they should have shot him right there. Boom. Too bad he doesn't know the Clintons. <laughs> <laughs> well, and maybe if he pee on Chelsea. Yeah, it needs to cross them, boy. Get suicided. Golly. Oh. My gosh. When are you going to run for office? Ain't never going to happen, baby. 
they're going to start wiggling the door on that closet and one little skeleton toe going to stick out <laughs> like that. And I'll end my campaign right now. <laughs> the, the, the only skeleton's got gout. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That big old swollen knuckle toe. <laughs> Got that toe it's in my ankle coming. now, man. Oh. Got that toenail coming out. Oh, like you, I don't have it in my toes. I got it in my ankles. Good Lord, man. Bad, dude. I'm falling apart. You're one percenters, brother. Yeah. Well, it you looks, live like kings, you get the ailments of kings. That's, that's right. Works, that's yeah. right. It looks like Graham Allen's going to run for politics. I mean, he's he wants got, to. Well, he's got that Texas politician outfit going on now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where he's got the blue jeans, the boots. Yeah, if he he's got an the, Oxford rolled yeah. up. I hate he that. Needs a, he needs an eye patch. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate that with Paul. I, I, I hate politics to start with. Me too. And I hate politicians. Every one of them. I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, I agree, I agree, Independent, yeah. Libertarian. I don't care. I hate them all. They're all they're 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 all. Although bad. we do welcome you to come on the show, and we'll be very friendly. Absolutely, to you. absolutely. <clears throat> and please cut taxes for businesses, small businesses especially. Small <laughs> businesses. Y'all are the thirty first fastest growing company in America. Oh. Um. <laughs> Small bit in my ass. Y'all ought to see that sweatshop they're running down in Tybee Island. It is not on Tybee no, Island. No, it's it not. Is, it's uh, not. I, was, I was trying to throw the feds yeah. off. <laughs> I appreciate it. It is in California. <laughs> but all them politicians walking around. How's my girl A.C. Ludwig doing? Autumn. Autumn Ludwig. A.C. Ludwig. She, boy, she's mad right now. Why is she mad? Because the Riley Green concert got canceled. Oh, I did see that. <laughs> She got mad. She go to the beach her, and sip a margarita. Or something. I got her tickets for it, and she got all mad about it. I know Riley. Riley's a recent. Yeah, that was uh, good dude. yeah well, he's a. You know, I know everybody from the nineties. So. I know you do. I know you do. I always say when you what other antiques you digging up. <laughs> Let's list them. You got all, we done listed the wrestlers. Now you got Craig Morgan on board. Craig's a good dude. He's a Craig's vet. Craig's a good guy. Mark Wheels. Mark, yeah, Craig, Mark Will, well, first of all, let's go back to Craig. Yeah. Craig just released a new uh, song. Have you heard it? I have heard it. My fa- uh, was it the father, the father my, son, my son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost yeah. Talking about his son that that drowned. And let me tell you something. There, Craig Morgan, that you you put somebody better in front of me yeah. than him. Uh, it's gonna be hard. Uh, and we just did a, a t shirt line with him. Smooth as fast. He's a former fifth group guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Craig's just a good guy. Funny. Um, uh, sent me a picture the other day, and I didn't realize that he had become a lesbian. Uh, he looked like a middle-aged lesbian in the picture. It's like, I figured he's probably driving a Subaru Outback or something, you know. Um, and then he sent me a picture of his uh, of his rear end. And, we need to get uh, those pictures and put them up. No. Dennis. Yeah. No. Uh, but, no, he's a good guy. Uh, Mark Wills mm-hmm. in a 19-something. Um, you know, Mark – has written every song that was sang at every wedding in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the ones he didn't write, and he just, Brian McKnight did. Brian <laughs> McKnight did them. <laughs> I do. I do. Cherish you. Cherish you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Mark Wills. We got oh, Charlie Daniels. Charlie, Charlie's been around forever. Yeah. He does. He's a good guy. We do a lot of his shirts. and uh, I don't know, man. I don't know who all we got. I can't keep up with them. I know. We, we were just it. at Carl Malone's place yesterday. Oh, yeah? Just stopped through there? Yeah. He was signing. West Monroe, a, Louisiana? Yeah, he just got him a new car dealership over there. A car dealership? He owns now, he's a couple got, of them. He's got the cigar shop. He's got the 511. He's got a teriyaki grill. Yeah. He's got an ice cream place. He's bigger than the Robertsons over there. He's got he's got the Texaco, an Arby's. If you own an Arby's, son, you will be best friends. You're printing money. I love the meats. Um, and... <laughs> We sat down here stay with a buddy of mine, Duke. He owns a whole bunch of uh, Popeye's chickens. Who does? My bu- I got a buddy over here. Uh, it's uh, Carl's neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you told me about that. He dude. owns a ton. He owns the Popeye's. He Did anybody a- get shot in one of his restaurants trying to get one of them damn sandwiches? Uh, no, no. Sandwich doesn't no, exist. No. But my man's looking at beach houses now. <laughs> yeah, I bet he is. I think that Popeye's sandwich is a myth. I don't think it ever existed. You don't think so? I ain't seen a picture of a single one of them. I ain't seen nobody getting one. Everybody's waiting on them. Or being told they're sold out of them. They shot, they pulled a gun out. Five people stormed the Popeyes the other day in Houston, Texas. How did this start, the whole debate? I think Chick fil A started it. Why would they? And I have they're no doubt. They're busy enough. I have no doubt that Popeyes makes a better chicken sandwich. If I could ever eat one. That proves that Chick fil A is good Christians. They good they're people. trying to help other They're reaching out to the minority community is what they're doing. They're helping out other restaurants that need trying business. Trying to help the urban community. 
I love Popeyes. Because I've seen a bunch of viral videos online now and these Popeyes chickens where people are fighting each other. And I mean, this one dude crawled through the window. Over spicy chicken sandwiches. And jumped in the window of the drive thru and a girl working the thing choked his big ass out. And they took him right back out the window with his shoes off the same way he climbed in. <laughs> I ain't seen a single white dude. This is black people problems right here. I ain't seen a single white person fighting I over a chicken sandwich. No, you can't say that, Chad. Oh, I can say it. Because, look, I make fun of white people all day long, don't I, Candace? Me and Copy Cand- that. Yes, that's Me and true. Candace get together, and let me tell you, we rag on white people. No, we do, Candace. Candace, okay. how often do you talk bad about Caucasians? Never. Never? never. Candace has yeah. never said a bad thing about anybody in this world. I just wish Are I could you, hear Is that true? I wish I could hear a cuss one time. Cuss one time. Say cuss. Drop the F-bomb right now. I'm just going to say, say a word, it. Say and it then hard. I'll just bleep it in post. Say it hard. It. Say it hard right now. I want to get you just a mean one. Now, I think there's get been more, times get, where... Get an angry one. Like a... You just... Like, Candace, don't bow to... down to Satan's pressure. I'm not going to. I'm just going to... I'm going to bleep Matt some... Matt Lida, Who's this guy right here? What's his she name? Take, that's the puppet master, Mark Tate. You oh, talk Mark about Tate. him like he ain't in the room. Like he's behind glass or something. The man is sitting right there driving the mothership. He's got a Florida State shirt on. You got well, any crab well, legs back here? Well, he went to Liberty <laughs> University. Yeah. He's a Liberty Flame. He went to Liberty University. You went to Liberty University? I, I did, yep. Ain't that a Christian university? It is a Christian and university. And they have a great football team, too. And they got Hugh Freeze up here coaching. <laughs> they do. They do. Yep. It's, all, it's forgiveness. It's all about forgiveness. It's, it's all about really forgiveness, yeah. That man coached from a hospital bed on Saturday. <laughs> and let, and let, yeah, let that was kind of weird. <laughs> Unless you keep losing football games, and they ain't going to forgive you. They don't care, Liberty. <laughs> Coach, I fire you, Liberty son. University sponsors a NASCAR car. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> Come on. We got to talk about Liberty Let me one tell day. you something. If you've ever been to the infield of Talladega Motor Speedway, there ain't nobody going to Liberty University <laughs> hey, easy, in the middle easy. of that infield. <laughs> You know what happened last time we talked about the oh, Flames? Oh, we get it, boy. We can't talk about Liberty nothing. Liberty University. Yeah, is that uh, their name? Is the Flames? The Flames. That's their mascot. Yeah. Uh, your mascot is the Flames. Sparky. That's the Flames. Right? Yep. Are y'all Pentecostal? I grew up Pentecostal. You know, that's what's and funny. And they got an eagle named Sparky. Because the thing is, the Pentecostals, you know, they it's just about fire insurance. You know, they're it is just they scare you into heaven. <laughs> so it's everything you do is gonna send you to hell. So they're just burning in the flames. That's your actual flames. Yeah, that's what they called it. I think I think it was supposed to be something about like the whole. It was like knowledge of flame, Spirit like they're filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that was the idea. Tongues of like fire. Brother, let me yeah. tell you something. I'm I'm a good Christian. I go I go to church more than most. It sounds like that's your mama dumb, needs to go. That's a dumb mascot. <laughs> <laughs> that is Liberty University. You can do better. You can do better than the Flames. You know, they should be the Liberty, the Liberty Fallwells. Hey, it's not me. <laughs> should be the Liberty Fallwells. It says so much. Oh, boy, yeah. be the be the be the biggest dorm rooms. <laughs> Every one of them got a water slide in it. Water slides yeah. in it. <laughs> All the females, oh, they come with a bag of makeup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get in so much trouble. Oh, oh get man. Car uh, to Ulta. <laughs> <laughs> going to get you a bunch of makeup. Hey, don't you wear no dress, though, but I'm going to wear this $3,000 suit. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't you come in here with that makeup. You think makeup. about Oral Roberts. <laughs> Lord, That's all Roberts University. You just lost all your Pentecostal I'm fans. I'm from Spartanburg. We got Bob Jones. <laughs> you got Bob Jones. Oh, a whole other dude. Ooh, wow. That's strict right That's there. Next oh, right let there. me tell you something. I, your six people that watch this show, yeah. probably three of them are from my town. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've just got a text message. Bob Jones University. <laughs> heard that. <laughs> They got eyes in the sky. <laughs> Y'all just thought the NSA was powerful. Boy. Bob Jones University will bring you down. <laughs> Billy Graham left Bob Jones University because he thought it was so crazy. It's crazy. If Billy Graham is, is was about as close to Jesus as we had on this earth, mm-hmm. and if that man thought that they were lunatics, <laughs> I don't understand. Y'all direct still... all email to Matt Lauda at <laughs> nineLineApparel.com. Dot gov. <laughs> Dot fed. <laughs> And you got to make fun of everybody. I do. You've got to make fun of everybody. Yeah. Except miniature horses. 
No, we make fun of miniature horses too. Because yeah. again, nobody knows how the horse feels about being on a damn plane pressurized at thirty-five thousand feet. You can't That's have this cruelty. conversation without Graham Allen in the room. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> we ain't talking about guns or dead this babies. This is this man's mode of transportation. Yeah, he <laughs> miniature horse, <laughs> old town road. <laughs> this is his mode. Who'd you say Graham looks like? Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. He does. He I'd say he looks like SpongeBob because yeah, he's so broad. That boy's got the widest. He shoulders. is wide. He's like a door coming down the. Road. <laughs> It's like, turn like a sideways. door with feet. I love him though. He, you gotta I, love him. He's our buddy. <laughs> He's your brother, him. man. He's stirring it up though. His Dude, podcast is killing it. I know. And you know, I've I've been around Grant for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, back when he, got, I don't know how many followers he had on Facebook when we first met. Um, Me and his money I, could buy. <laughs> Ten dollars went a long ways back then. <laughs> One of them dang algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Chad Prather's not a good friend. <laughs> I apologize for him. <laughs> By the way, Candice, now Graham won't watch this show, but you're going to wind up putting out an edited clip that he'll in, 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 inevitably see. Oh, for sure. I already marked one. And trust me, he don't. He don't laugh at this like we do. <laughs> no, I bust him all the time. Yeah, I know, I, I do too. Oh, I bust him. Graham much. don't laugh at us the same way we no, laugh at I, him. I, yeah. I, I, I love him, though. Of and course. the thing was, was when, he first started he getting, when he first started getting noticed, we were in Las Vegas walking into one of the convention centers inside the hotel, and there was, uh, there was a few ladies waiting on him that were middle aged ladies, you know, mm -hmm. 40s or 50s, something like that. Um, and they saw him, and they come running to him. And they're like, oh, my gosh. And I just left him. And he comes to me and goes, don't ever do that again. He said, brother, I didn't think I was ever going to get away. <laughs> so now I'm the bad guy when mm -hmm. we're in public. Because Graham can't be. Graham can't tell people no. Right. So I always am the bad guy. I'm always the guy going, no, no. You know, Graham's got a horse tied up out here that he's got to get to. <laughs> You gotta get it's, to the plane. It's horse. Him and his horse got a plane to catch. <laughs> got a plane to catch. I mean, they ain't gotta catch it. It's just it's sitting there sad. waiting on them. Yeah, it's but they gotta get on it. Oh man. Yeah, I can remember we were uh Graham and I were in Times Square, <laughs> New York City. And you've been look now, you've made it when you get recognized in Times Square. Where was it I got recognized Grand in Grand Central Station? Grand Central Station right I got recognized. It. But you walking down that homeless he's the only guy that homeless man. That's what I'd hours. been there the week before and paid him. <laughs> <laughs> he's hey, white blood. hey, white blood. Hey, white blood. I said, hang around, Steve. We might have to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only guy in that whole place with a cowboy hat on. He kind of stood said, out like Hey, man, in thumb. six days, I'm going to be back here with this guy with a miniature horse. Just make sure you come up to me. But Graham was getting recognized in, in uh, Times Square. Yeah. And then we were out for that movie premiere for Unplanned in L.A. And so uh, we were in West Hollywood. If, Not West Hollywood, if, we were in Hollywood. If you and Graham Allen get recognized in L.A. <laughs> he grabbed this dude, slammed on his brakes on Hollywood Boulevard with his window rolled down and yelled out the window, Hey, Graham Allen! I just kept on walking. Because <laughs> let me tell you, in Hollywood, you don't you're know either going to get shot or laid. <laughs> Both are involuntary. <laughs> It could be by the same dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, hey, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you was going to be out here. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? <laughs> Toss in some loonies and toonies. Yeah. There you go. Oh. You got to get the wild here. Why do you got these to-go bags of food? Hey, what you <laughs> Why you got so many Happy Meals in the back seat? Well, my van broke down, <laughs> and R. Kelly went to jail. Hey, Hillary, uh, how you doing? <laughs> She's just sitting there in the passenger seat. Oh, go I, want, I want that painting of Bill Clinton, by the way. Oh, wouldn't you love to have it? Gosh. I wonder where it is. Who's got it? Let me tell you something. That sucker's going to go on eBay one day. It better. I'll buy it. I mean, like that should be I'm, a Sotheby's auction right there. I'm going broke on that one. <laughs> Tyler Hopefully Merritt. it don't go for get more than $112 Tyler, Get Tyler Merritt to buy it uh, Y'all can hang it up right there in the in the store there at 9 Line Right at the entrance Right there Boom. Right at the entrance We'll move them you Zach Brown imagine. knives out of the way <laughs> Yeah Can you imagine though If you had that thing And just you put it behind a glass case And people come see it like the Betsy Ross flag <laughs> 
little pieces torn off of it where people paid homage. Is it okay to kneel for that one? Yeah. Okay. What the Betsy Ross flag or the or the no the queer painting the, pa- the, the painting the, just yeah <laughs> yeah God knows Monica did <laughs> I did have a good cigar last night oh I wanted one last night I was in the mood we went and visited with uh, hang on talking monkey says I'm gonna show you all this bottle hang on I got I got a future on this thing talking monkey says hey uh, party pal are you looking for Carrie a full time job. But no, oh, okay. I, I love this. I got like eight part-time jobs, and I love all what of is them. So. Steve's got so many part-time Finished jobs. Whiskey. All Boy, you, you know what? How many whiskey people do you have? I mean, John Rich. John Rich. You see all the empty bottles back there <laughs> behind me. His uh, Redneck Riviera, John Rich. He, John get mad at me. For He's going to do the Made in America thing. They keep telling me I am, but I don't know. <laughs> they don't want you. I'm <laughs> good. I'm okay with it. Um, you can't bring her. It's a Made in America. She was made in America. Oh, okay. Her parents weren't. <laughs> it's like buying a Chevy made in like Canada. <laughs> She's kind of like a Toyota, you know. Oh yeah, it's, there we go. Like a Toyota made in San Antonio. But it ain't quite American. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. Look at this whiskey right here. Look at this whiskey. Now that's Oak and Eden. I went and met with these guys the other night. What they do? If you, you see that little stick in there, it's a I spiral. can't see it. Yeah, yeah, I see it. All right. Now, what they do is, rather than age their bourbon in a barrel, they found a genius way of taking these flavored pieces from the oak barrels. Like this one's been dipped in, uh, it's been soaked in one of the raw beer IPAs, and they drop it in a rye bourbon and let it age like that, and it gets the color and it gets the flavor off of it. Let me tell you, we're going to see a Chad Prather common sense later. You know, there's nothing better or more smart than you describing in a very seductive seductive way a bottle of whiskey to a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. (laughs) Well, well, I ain't hear you complaining at 4 a.m. in Vegas at Caesar Palace while we... I, don't I was trying the, to do business. That was the first time we ever met. I usually recover every morning. That was the first time we ever so, met in person. In person. Do you remember the first phone call? Yeah, of course. We stayed on the phone for an hour. Didn't talk about anything, did didn't we? Didn't want to hang, didn't want to hang up with each other. Did. At the end of it, Chad goes. Sort of like this podcast. Chad goes, I've been, he said, I've been sitting here the whole time talking to you naked. I said, I have too, but all the people in Dollar General will get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was starting to get marks on the back of my leg from the lawn chair. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, never talked to the guy before, and we shared our deep, deepest, deepest secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was almost as though the heavens parted and the finger of God came down and just touched this relationship. I also sat at the Delmonico in the Venetian with you on the second day I met you, and I've never in my life seen someone. With as little talent, but yet knows so many people. You mean so many people that know me? <laughs> it's a significant difference. We sat difference. there, and Chad literally goes, "I'm gonna, I want to introduce you to a few people." I sat there for four hours, and it was like they were all sitting outside waiting <laughs> for me. It was a lie, and they were coming in. And he's like, "Yeah, this person runs this company. This person runs that company. This person does this." And I'm sitting there going, well, "My God! Well, I'm just gonna sit here and eat steak and put it on Chad's tab." And <laughs> you did do that. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that did happen. It was just interrupted a lot. That Brazilian steakhouse dinner was oh, one of those. Yeah, Undertaker picked up that tab, didn't he? No, that's a different. That was a different, oh, that's one. a different one. You know what? I'm not going to be mean, but he only picked up one tab. Party, Undertaker. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say that one night at Caesar's Palace, and you picked it up. You were like, "Dear God, I didn't even drink anything." <laughs> I that was see- nine hundred dollars. <laughs> and I, I got a text message the next morning from our chief financial yeah. officer. She goes, "You spent eight hundred dollars in a cigar bar." I said, "Actually, it was nine <laughs> hundred. That's a Tuesday for us over at the ranch. No kidding. That was a Tuesday for me over at the ranch. Oh, oh man, I had to cut myself off. We, we'd go over there, be eight, nine, ten, eleven people over there sitting around the table eating dinner at the ranch on a Monday night, and. And I was like, I can't keep, I can't keep coming home with six, seven hundred dollar dinner bills. I mean, you gotta go to the Golden Corral. I ain't got one of those. You noticed here. when you stop, oh. we stopped going to the ranch like that. We don't have all the extra people yeah. hanging out. Yeah, see, fair weather friends. 
Hey, we got to get out of here. I got to do this crazy wild other show that I'm about to do. It's going to yeah, be a I major gotta, expose. I you got to get back over to the NRA convention. Like it started this thing with you, your domestic terrorist. Yeah, I got to pay. You see where San Francisco is now called uh, the NRA? They've, they've labeled them domestic terrorists in the city of San I Francisco. I saw that. I mean, an illegal alien can shoot Kate Steinle and get away scot free. I, I could care less about the city of San Francisco. How many uh, San Francisco police officers are members of the NRA? I'd like to know that because they just. They got police law- in San Francisco? Absolutely. And God bless them. I mean, that's. Uh, I know lots of law enforcement that are members of the NRA. So now we they're considered terrorists. Hey, party file. Hey, it's a serious. Hey, hey party file. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not worried. You just, you know, part of how me and you pretty much the same guys. It's the longest gotta, podcast we've had see. all week. Hey, <laughs> is that a problem? Hunter ain't had gotten to say two words. Oh. Hunter been sitting over there looking no, all me. pretty. I keep wanting to go With go to him. DDPY shirt on like he's going to do yoga. Break out into a little yoga pose Can for us. <laughs> I don't know if everyone's ready for that yet. You know what I get? You know what I get to do tomorrow night? Hands down, promise you. You know what I'm doing tomorrow night? My wife has got me doing this thing tomorrow night. You know what I got to go do? I got to go do rabbit and pig yoga. Do what? Yeah. Rabbit and pig yoga? Have you seen the goat yoga? Where you're doing the yoga and the goats climb all over you and stuff? Is that why we moved the party to Saturday? Yes. On Jordan's birthday. Okay. Yeah. Because I got to go. Hold on. Let me check my phone. With let me Chris see if I and got Debbie that Bates, to I got to go. My wife has roped mm. me into this frou-frou crap ever since she started hanging around with all of her doctor friends. So it's what's it called again? It's pig and, pig and rabbit yoga. Sounds like prom night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send pictures. I'm thinking about claiming the gout's too flared up and I can't do it. It's a good excuse because nobody can really tell if you're really, like, I ain't faking doing it. it or not. I ain't you know. it. I mean, Jade fakes a lot of stuff with you, so you can just fake it. She's actually giving up on that. <laughs> your wife is an absolute saint. She, re- Your wife is an absolute <laughs> saint. Amy's an absolute freaking saint. You kidding me? <laughs> Golly. Oh, man, she was so excited to see your first stand-up. <laughs> she ain't been back since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has. <laughs> Backstage. <laughs> I don't know where you were. Oh Lord, and I was happy to know it too. All right, gotta get out of here. Go to go to watchchad.com. Find me out on tour. Nineloneapparel.com. Nineloneapparel.com. Use Chad twenty for twenty percent off. There you go. They anytime, can still do that, can't they? Anytime. You gonna put another unapologetic patriot shirt out there so I can make a little money or what? Yeah, if we could sell one. Man, what I mean, are it's you okay. talking about? I Why sell don't you more call, money than Oz guys. Why don't you just call these people you're getting all these other shirts made from? I do it. Yeah. Let's see how you Hey, I diversify my portfolio, baby. Yeah, well. Partyfoundation.com, watchchad.com. You can go to theblaze.com. You can get merch are you doing? Are you doing anything that's making me any money? Yeah. Okay, just make sure. Well, can't you see it? Man, just... Can't hide this money. Oh, I know. You got Corvettes. People Mercedes. said they used to like me until I became a one percenter. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous. Are you one percent of the top or bottom? Look, man, I got mud on stuff? my hat and everything. I ain't changed a bit. Where you still got that hat? They got autographed. Yeah, yeah. I was in my <laughs> office the other day, and Jade walked through, and I said, I looked up, and there was his hat hanging on the wall. And I was like, Which hat is that? Because I got a bunch of hats, right? So which hat is that? And uh, she said, That's the one that uh, got signed. So Undertaker, we were at dinner one night. I still had one more day in Vegas, right? <laughs> Undertaker takes my hat off my head. What am I gonna do? Yeah, and takes a sharpie marker. And signs it right here on the crown. Like, not on the brim or something where I could have survived the next day. Now I got to walk around with scribble. <laughs> was that the only hat you brought? Yeah, this probably worth. Yeah. And it was a good hat, too. But now it's, a, now it's worth something. We need to auction that sucker off for well, charity. You got, you got a couple of... Was it, I do. I've got the belt. And, I've, well, I've, no, I've, the hat's got, like, Hannah Barron on there. Yeah, I got Hannah Katie Barron. Katie Van Slyke. I and, got uh, Jeff Barron. I got Katie Van Slyke yeah, on there. And, yeah. and I think That's a good dinner. You might even... I, I didn't sign. Yeah, I didn't sign. want to devalue. I don't know. Yeah, but we need to auction that thing off for charity. And then I've got the belt that uh, Dustin Rhodes and Undertaker signed that I bought at y'all's. Yeah. Once auction. we get off this, we need to talk about your card getting declined on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, man. Uh, That's messed up. Party foul seat of that. I'm gonna go by Glenn Beck's office, just pick up a check. <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> there's some valuable stuff over in Glenn Beck's office. Well, I see that you're in, uh, in the, the second, different building. You're in a different it's building. Completely it's different a building. Different building. I've been to that building. I walk past Glenn's office, which is all glass. glass. Yeah. And so when he's sitting in there, I wave, you know, like, "Hey, Glenn," and he's like, "It's like, <laughs> yeah, the, the trash is good. The trash is good." <laughs> <laughs> he's so confused when I walk past, yesterday. like, "Who is that?" <laughs> Who is that? You know, we didn't have air conditioning in this studio for like six months. We were sweating our asses off. Yeah, neither, a, neither do the soldiers. We had a, <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? They eat on my dime. But anyway, <laughs> we had You're swamp welcome. coolers built in here out of styrofoam stuff. And we, I mean, we were trying everything we could. And then we had Glenn Beck on the show. As soon as a day that, later, we got AC. Because <laughs> Glenn you gotta, bring, you gotta bring the money in. Yeah. You got to bring the money in. Boss man. If there was one thing you could change about yourself, what would it be? I'd, 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 uh, I don't know. I think I like me pretty good. I do too. I think I'd, I think I'd be like that, that Dominican guy we were talking about. Blind? No, that's the Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's British. Oh, eight no, potatoes. Oh, the Dominican before potatoes. we went on air. Yeah. No, you don't. I would own me a taters and titties. <laughs> God, real estate's where the money's at. It so you really need to, is. That's a that's a good investment. You know, what party found Steve you're investing said to me in people at that point. People, process, and uh, product. You know, what party found said to me the other day, walking through the airport in Denver, Colorado. He said, "You know, I've just finally gone ahead and admitted to myself I know I'm better than most people." <laughs> <laughs> he don't even try to deny. No, it. I don't deny it anymore. <laughs> some, you see, when you're a Lutheran, you can get like that. <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they get. <laughs> I love you, Party Foul. We all do. I love you too. Party Foul is actually one of my more favorite people to be that's, around. That's fantastic. Man. Yeah, I'm glad people let you be around them. It's hard to do. It kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Where? Let me look at you. I don't care. I, I dress, know you don't. <laughs> Trust me, we know you don't. I wear. I, wear, I tell people all the time they're like, I, I buy all my clothes from Walmart or Nine Nine Apparel. <laughs> You buy them from my not, line. And now I'm not going to Walmart, so now I can't go in. You know, I like going in there buying some flip-flops and some uh, and, and some 223. You can't do it no more. Yeah. So um, nothing like picking up a pistol and some dog food. So, <laughs> can't do that anymore. Can't do it anymore. They don't shut that down. I know. Honey, we need pampers. All right. Well, come out with a long rifle. But can't do that anymore. <laughs> so... I gotta go somewhere else, I guess, and I can't go to Target. I get in there and I, you know, I get the runs and I get confused. I don't know what bathroom to go into. If you had to use a public bathroom, like you, like, like, if you could choose any store that's out there, yeah, which one would you go to? Publix. Publix. See, we don't have Publix out here. Well, y'all are on the West Coast. Yeah, we got H E B. Publix is only in the South. We do have Kroger here, though. I like a Kroger. Kroger depends on the. See, I worked for Frito Lay for a long time, for seven years, so I can determine. From the outside of a store, yeah. Whether they got clean bathrooms or not, I yeah. could see it from the from the highway. I like from the to sign go. on the on the for the exit. I can look at that sign and go, "That's a pooping bathroom." Now, there's people in here talking about Bucky's and stuff like that, but everybody don't have Bucky's. Like you could God, eat off you Bucky's. could eat off a of Bucky's toy. I ate a pork sandwich at three o'clock this morning in a stall. Did you? Yep, in Terrell, Texas. Mm-hmm. It's I love while Bucky's. you're pooping. You ever eat while you're pooping? At Bucky's. At Bucky's. I don't even do it at my own house. And they have a guy in the stall with you that'll wipe your face. I know it. (laughs) It's amazing. With his penis. I mean, you can sit. It's like a dry. I guess he worked there. It's like a Sonic inside. (laughs) Bucky's is like a Sonic. It was it was through some hole in the wall, but yeah. (laughs) That was. It wasn't even a Bucky's. (laughs) It was an Exxon, and I got a tiger by the tail. But you know, Buck, Bucky's like a Sonic. You know, you can order food from your stall. <laughs> you can hit a little button like yeah. Sonic, yeah, he, it, and they come skating yeah, in <laughs> with a change it. maker. Here's your loonies and toonies. Yeah, they're just rolling in there like a Uber Eats in there. <laughs> in <laughs> Diner the Dash. Yeah, I mean, I go to a Bucky's. I leave the stall door open when I poop. Yeah, so I you can visit. Like, they're good yeah, people. They're just sitting there, talk to everybody. Yeah, have conversations. Yeah. I know. And everybody, got. it's like almost going in the barbershop talking about the weather when you're in the bucket. You're like, can you believe how clean this damn thing is? There's more Pure L stations inside of a bathroom at a Bucky's yeah. than there is in a hospital. Yeah. It's absolutely, I love a Bucky's. You could do surgery in a Bucky's bathroom. I leave Carl Malone's, and this is my, this is how I do things. I leave Carl's. I ate at a Whataburger, which is right there by Carl Malone Toyota. 
<laughs> Not to be confused with Paul Thick Ben Chevrolet or Ford. <laughs> Sell them all, Paul. You need him on the show. <laughs> I know, right? Um, and I ate that water burger, and you know what water burger does to you? I do. I will hold it till I get to Terrell, Texas. Yeah, I don't care if I get in the parking lot and have to pee. Mm-hmm. I will hold it till I get to Terrell, Texas, and eat and, and get to that Bucky's. Hey, that's a new T-shirt. Fecal matters. It does. <laughs> I love a Bucky's. That's a new t shirt right there. Like it's a Bucky's t shirt. Fecal matters. I Fecal like, matters. I dated a girl in the tenth no? grade that looked like I think the Bucky's female. mascot. <laughs> Did she leave a racing stripe on you? It was scary, son. You don't know you don't know no better in tenth grade. Tenth grade's one of them grades that kinda you can't really drive yet. That's the problem with a girl with buck and her chipped teeth, man. They leave a racing stripe on you. <laughs> You, and also, don't ever don't date a girl that dips. It looks like grass clippings down there. She gets done. It's just awful. <laughs> get, get, like, I got Amy on the bandits. <laughs> we go, we're good to go now. She's dipping of skull bandits. <laughs> like, we're getting busted on you. <laughs> we, we a little her, pouch between you. Got her on the Cheek bandit. and nut sack. It just keeps, it, keeps a lot cleaner down there. <laughs> Man, you're very winter green. I'm a grizzly guy. You really? <laughs> Boy, I, tell, I ripped a, I ripped an oak off a tree one time when I was dipping when I was in high school. I crawled from my granny's pond all the way up to that trailer, son. Lord have mercy, I almost died. Oh, I know. That I'd feeling. change my laugh if there was one thing I could change about myself. Why? I got a terrible laugh. I sound like an idiot. I got the same laugh as my brother. He's an important person, so I guess I might as well be appreciative that I have the same laugh as him. I ain't got the same intelligence as him, but we know. I don't like my laugh. And uh, and my toes, because I show them off a lot. I wish I had to say Well, there's no such thing as pretty feet. But at least you keep your feet clean. clean. I do keep A lot clean. of dudes, you know, they got the dicky do disease, where the dicky do, the belly sticks out further than the dicky do. Yeah. But they hadn't seen their feet in 10 years. They don't know what their feet. They got that one toenail that's like a tortilla chip got left in the fire too long. Oh yeah, well that I, there ain't no other way to get the sauce off the floor unless your dog's gonna lick it up, and you can't have that. Now, if if you drop cheese on the floor and it stays there at least two days, you gotta have something to scrape it with. Oh, my dog ain't gonna let that happen. I know, my dog. Lady Bird had surgery. Be praying for y'all. Lady Bird's one hundred seven years old in dog years. She um, she's got a beard like me. Yeah, and uh, she's a sweet dog, but she had a hernia. And she was about 11 pounds overweight. <laughs> so I think a bit of dachshund, <laughs> that ain't a good thing. <laughs> She's so fat. <laughs> she takes after her You should her take mama. her to one of those vagina hat rallies and dress her up. A weenie dog in a vagina costume. <laughs> Does John Burke's dogs do that? <laughs> I ain't John does. That. I ain't seen with that. Hmm. Oh, John. I ain't hmm. seen with that hat on him. Uh, but yeah, I changed my laugh. That's good. All right, go to ninelineapparel.com. Yeah. Matt Light is going to go over to the NRA convention. We are our NRA speak. personal protection. Yeah, personal protection. Ninelineapparel.com. That's a bad word. They're housing veterans, homeless folks down in Savannah. Yeah, we're building a homeless veterans village. That's, that's not a joke. Um, yeah, we got 74 tiny homes we're building there in Savannah. Yeah. Doing good things. Pretty we cool built thing. what five homes for disabled veterans, five you know, fully handicapped accessible homes. Mm-hmm. One down in New Braunfels, she was there for it. Yep. Yeah. Um and the and the house that Nine Line originally started in, burn. Burn 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 to the ground. Burn to the ground. It's uh it is a uh you know, a metaphor for my life more than anything, I believe. But uh yeah, the house that it started in in that little garage, mm-hmm. um, which I think's all made up. I think probably so. Probably so. I, hey, I need you, when we get off here, I need you to teach Party Foul Steve how to sell some T-shirts at PartyFoulNation.com. Well, if, if, he's, starting a, he's starting an empire. Well, the thing is, those T-shirts ain't made at 99apparel.com. That's the problem. We can, we can work something out. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's been getting them printed local, so you can just run down there and pick them up. You don't want to do that. But well, I mean, we can work I a deal. I thought you wanted to get your shirts made in America. I'm sure Steve can work a deal. Yeah. I'm sure Steve can work a little deal with Nine Line Apparel. But he's, could, Steve, he's building an empire, Matt Lada. He's 
part. Look at it. One shirt at a time. He's an empire in itself. I, I like you see, Gilbert. You see Party Foul Steve in a year from now, he's going to have his hair cut. He ain't going to cut his hair. He's going to be wearing collared shirts. <laughs> if I could grow my hair out. You know, I used to have hair like yours, Party Foul. And um, then I cut it because I went corporate. You know, I used to wear a suit every day. That's why I dress like I do. I ain't never seen a man driving a Frito Lay truck in a suit. I, I it was bet between you still Frito got expired <laughs> Frito Lay chips at your house, don't you? Right now? Yeah. No, I don't eat Frito Lay chips. Okay. Um, It'll make you go blind. I, well, <laughs> you eat enough of them. Three I years. Can, let me tell you something. A homeless man broke into my Frito Lay truck one time and stole all the cookies out of them. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a homeless person break into anything that you had, but not yet. <laughs> I had this homeless man break into it, my friend. I'm assuming he's a man. Um, broke into my, I don't know what pronoun this homeless person went by, but broke into my Frito Lay truck and stole all my oatmeal raisin cookies and stole my lunch, but dropped a shirt, dropped one of his shirts inside the the Frito Lay truck. I went the rest of the day without drinking out of my water jug because I just didn't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, I just, I, did he stop and maybe take a sip and leave it there? Did he? I don't know. That's, a, that's an insight into you. Brother, let me tell you something. That day, that day changed me. I like a truck. Like cats. I like in the truck. As soon as I get out of it, I'm in that lock button. I hate your guts. <laughs> Candice earlier, Candice was, she said, so what, what's y'all's angle on today's podcast? I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't this, worry this about this it. This will probably never be aired. <laughs> this oh, it'll be aired. useless hour it'll be and a aired. half, hour and 15 minutes. What's your name again? Candice. What's her real name? Candace. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. Are you Ethiopian or Mexican? Of course she's Ethiopian. Look at her. What are you? Has yet to be determined. We don't talk about what she oh, is. Oh, yeah, you're doing the 23 and Me, aren't you? Yeah, we're waiting on sponsorship. sponsorship. Oh, 23 Glenn Beck has a 23 If there's and me any sponsorship. show you should sponsor, is this one, so we can find out. Let me, I'm the most Chad diverse really redneck you know. I got Steve, who's a hillbilly. This I ain't got, a diverse show. You got I the got, widest dudes sitting over I here. I understand, but I got Allison, who, who's a who's a uh, Canadian. I got a player to be named later over here in Candice. We got Mark, who's a who's a soulless ginger. I've got he ain't uh, ginger. Yes, he is. He is for my purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when Mark <laughs> like what. Also, it's ginger. You think I have oh, ginger? You think R. I'm a ginger? No. Okay. But Chance the Ginger yeah, Rapper, sure. sometimes he comes in here. Really? Yeah, and he doesn't have a soul. He's a little leprechaun. Mark's as white as it gets. I'm as white as it gets. But Bougie Sean, who you know. God, I love, where's he at? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. He said he was going to come over here this morning. I got pulled uh, over by a police officer yesterday, and I felt like me and I could bond over that. Bougie's the whitest, dude you, whitest black dude you know until he gets pulled over. Really? That's a whole other deal. I love Bougie. I love Bougie, too. But then we got Jason Metro Hernandez. He's Hispanic. That's then natural. I got my Cubano gay agent in Hollywood. Yes. I got my Jewish manager in L.A. in Hollywood. You aren't diverse. I'm very diverse. I did a 23 and me. I'm white. Really? I'm white. I don't know. I, I know I've got native. Uh, my great-grandmother was Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you hear those things. I don't know what I really am, though. Wait do you swab that cheek, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm just Appalachian. I love y'all. God bless. Go to where podcasts are offered. Download it. Listen to them there. Enjoy it. Go to NineLineApparel.com and find me out on the road. I love you. God bless you. Talk to you next time. Bye.